Connection is critical. It is on every digital piano because that is the interface between yourself and uh, the tone, just as it is on an acoustic piano. It's literally the mechanical uh, piece that you control uh, that, that, that gets the sound out of the instrument. And so how you uh, connect with it um, and, and how it's balanced against the tone that's generated is really, really important. It's the difference between feeling like you're really inside the music or feeling like you're fighting this machine the whole time. So I've mentioned the pivot length. This is one of the really big things about the Grandfield 3 and generally speaking, the whole Grandfield series of actions from Kawhi, uh, which is that when you've got a key that's the same length approximately as an acoustic piano, uh, uh, you're, you've got a key that's very easy to control regardless of where you are playing uh, in the note, and the resistance is fairly consistent regardless of where you are playing in the note. The longer the lever, uh, the less proportionally speaking uh, this section represents as a percentage of the total lever. Uh, so you're going to get less of a difference. Um, I.e., if you're playing, you know, a key here, it's going to still feel fairly similar to how you're playing it there. Even right at the back, you know, you're feeling a bit of a difference, but it's still highly controllable. Whereas when you've got digital pianos where that pivot length is much shorter, there's a massive difference in the resistance and controllability of the key depending on whether you play it here, here, or here. Um, where that may not affect beginning players that much, as you become more of an advanced player and the repertoire becomes a little more advanced, you actually find that you're using a really big percentage of the overall real estate on the key to play uh, different chords, different voicings, different passages. Uh, if you look at the overhead shot, You can see that uh, you know my fingers are, especially on some of the black keys, fairly in. So this is this is not an academic kind of hypothetical benefit. It's it's actually quite real. The second thing is is just like the CA99 and the 79 and the 701, which is its current uh, counterpart, that Grandfield 3, um, the whole key bed and the way that the key uh, sits in that key bed is also very reminiscent of what happens on an acoustic piano. You don't have hinges per se, you don't have springs. Um, it is a key that's basically sitting on steel pins and it's rocking back and forth. It's cushioned with real felt and it's sitting on real wood. This is a structure or a mechanical design that has been around for 150 plus years uh, or even longer I guess in terms of that portion of the action and it's super durable. It requires very little to no maintenance uh, and you can um, put a lot of physical abuse uh, into this keyboard without it needing uh, to be serviced. Uh, and some of those drawbacks that plastic actions have, which is that back hinge starts to loosen up over time and, and cause some clicking, completely absent on something like the Grandfield 3. In terms of weight, The way that they've done the touch curve on this makes the key actually feel a little on the light side. Um, this is of course just uh, kind of a psychoacoustic effect um, because if you turn the volume completely off, the keys never change uh, feel. So it's always what you think you're getting back out of the instrument compared to what you're putting in which uh, produces your overall uh, impression of the weight of the key. But in this case, the way it's uh, set up right off the shelf, it produces a sense that it's a little on the light side. Um, and if they're using the same touch curve as they've used on the Novus 5, then this is totally understandable because the physical action on the Novus 5 is a little bit heavier than this. And so um, to me, 
uh, that instrument has like a perfect mating between the touch curve and the actual weight of the key and, and your output. So if I was going to be using this, I would go in and maybe just uh, tweak the touch curve slightly to the heavy side. Uh, in terms of the key surface, we've got a textured black key and a matte textured white key. A lot of manufacturers are putting this faux ebony texture on the black key these days. Um, for me, that's not really like a pro or a con. Uh, generally, what you need to know is anytime you're adding texture to a key surface, the more dramatic the texture, the more slippery it's going to be because you're actually reducing uh, the uh, surface area that your finger is in contact with. So that's a personal thing. This action has escapement or let off simulation. What I like about let off, and I've said this in multiple videos, when you're playing in a very, very soft situation, that results in better control. Kind of makes it a little easier to voice those, you know, piano, mezzo piano chords, uh, bring a nice melody note out on top. And a fun fact that many people probably don't really think about is all of these actions are hand assembled. One last quick point, this is a triple sensor of course, so the accuracy of the output on this action is excellent if you're gonna be using this for recording either as a direct sound source or as a MIDI source, you are gonna be very, very, very happy and pleased with the accuracy and the, and the dynamic range of the MIDI information that this is going to be uh, outputting. <laughs>